If you're exploring the Himalayas, you might be surprised to see a goat, moose, bear, cow gazelle scuttling around the rocks. The Takin is an odd-looking beast whose elusive nature and gleaming fur possibly inspired a well-known ancient Greek myth. From its goofy nose to its smelly coat, this innovative ungulate finds unique ways to fight off the mountain chills. But staying warm and staying dry is something to be taken seriously on the cold Asian peaks here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I am Joe. And I am Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Jesse Rasporch, Carol Rasporch, Richard Gaspar, Lottie, Aubrey, and Gray Hughes. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about an animal that is ta- ta- talking care of business. But more on that later. Can you hear me talking? It's the talking, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, this is another example of us not having uh, uh, powwowed at all. <laughs> We're doing the talking. I don't know what the major fact is. Oh yeah, yeah, you don't. Um, this is one of those ones where I found it was I, I like I I was looking at a list of interesting animals and I saw it and I was like this is an interesting animal I will find out what the major fact is and then now we're recording it <laughs> and I'm like oh like the major fact yes I've done that many times we're like I just want to talk about this animal it's so cool there must be a major fact about it and sometimes animals just look cool but really they're total dorks on the inside <laughs> beauty really is skin teeth <laughs> but yeah we're but? talking about the 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 the, ta- the tacken or talking ta- tacken uh i think it is tacken um it is also called the uh the new goat new being gnu did you know that a new is a wildebeest it's I the same not. thing it's just a different word for the same animal Neo goat. <laughs> it's a new goat. It's a new goat. Uh, it's also called the cattle chamois. So <laughs> I do love that. Just cattle chamois. Chamois. Um, but we're gonna call it here the cattle though. chamois. The chamois. I don't know who gave it that name. Um, the sham wow. That's what it should be. <laughs> <clears throat> it'll uh you just take this you just take this massive animal uh and those wax stains come right out of your car <laughs> um but we're gonna call it here the battle bison uh the talking tuesday that's a bibby one um and mm. uh new kid on the walk gnu gnu kid on the walk <laughs> Okay. Would you like to know what science has to call it? I would. It's in the kingdom, you know, love and are in the kingdom of mammalia. It's in the phylum chordata. It's in the class mammalia. And here's where it diverges from you. It's in the order artiodactyla, which is ungulates of even toed ungulates. Uh, the same as whales. Basically, if you're thinking, <laughs> thinking of a whale, you're on the right track. Um, it's in the family Bovidae, which is a family of cloven-hooved ruminant cud chewers. Mm. 
Those that, that sounds like such a slur. Interestingly, but I guess it makes sense. It's in the subfamily Caprinae. Yes. It's in which is goats. And it's in the tribe Caprini. And the genus is Bud Orcas. <laughs> Bud Orcas. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> and it's in the the binomial name is Bud Orcas. Or Bud Bud Orcas. Taxi color. Yeah, this is There are so many one. ways to inflect on this binomial name. But I'm going to say Bud Orca's taxi color. Yeah, this is the the one of the least sophisticated sounding uh binomial nomenclatures um which I did not know what I I didn't pick it because of this uh nomenclature. I mean, it, the only thing like that would sound that's less sophisticated is like Pink Floydy. Um, <laughs> yeah. but this it is could pretty be, close. Um, it could be Budor Cass Taxi Color. Taxi yep. Col Taxi Color. Mucho Calor. <laughs> That's a Sesame Street song. Um, mm-hmm. Which brings me to my favorite part of the show nitty gritty nomenclature the part of the show where i ask you joe a question and it that question is what is the translation it's the english translation of the nomenclature so the genus and species we have bodorcus taxi color what does that mean what does that mean does it mean a Yak like multicolored climber. B. Badger colored cow gazelle. C. Long haired brown colored climbing goat. Or D. Badger like mobile bear goat. I had to get pretty creative with uh, with these to, to hide the real answer. So, yeah, yak like a multicolored climber. Mm-hmm. Badger colored cow gazelle. Long haired brown colored climbing goat. And badger like mobile bear goat. Mobile. Way better. It's a way more convenient than the desktop bear goat. <laughs> I'm going to go with the first badger one you said, B, I think. A badger Final colored answer. cow gazelle? Sure. Yeah, that sounds like a um one of those Final sap answer. rock bands. It's like I <laughs> Oh, do you listen to to Red Jumpsuit Apparatus? Well, I'm I listen to Badger Colored Cow Gazelle. Um you are correct. That is the answer. Badger Colored Cow Gazelle. I actually had to put two badger things in there. You- the etymology is what? a whole section right at the very beginning of the Wikipedia page, so I was like, oh, maybe he saw it. So I missed it. I missed it. Oh, yeah, it's right here. I just glossed over it. Yeah, I taxa, did what I was supposed to do. In Latin, taxis means badger, uh, and color means color. Um, so taxicolor means badger color. And bodorcus... Um, is uh, cow gazelle or cow like gazelle? Um, it is not a badger, it's not a cow, and it's not a gazelle. So these are all wrong. Would, what are we talking about? Would you like me to describe it? I would. Well, the Tacken has a robust physique that is similar to a musk ox in size and shape. Incidentally, a musk ox is also in the goat subfamily, not the cow subfamily, just like this, just like the Totkin. If you look at a musk ox, you're going to think that's more, it's cow-like, right? But it's not. It's goat-like, they said, the taxonomist decided. Uh, which is just interesting. I, I, I spend way too long looking at, like, 
there's just a a divergence in the bovids, which is like gazelles, cows, and goats. And I looked up what is the difference between a goat, a goat-like thing, and a cow-like thing. And the answer is the things, the, the only difference is what things are in bovine or caprine. The only difference is what is in those buckets. That's how you tell them apart. There's no real rhyme or reason. There's no to, There's no characteristic that's like okay, The only this. characteristic that I could find is that goats are generally smaller and less robust, but a musk ox is quite large. So and, and so this is guy's t- quite so, large. So is the talking, yeah. So it just goes to show you that when you're putting things in categories, it gets a little hairy. A little um, hairy, yeah. So like a um, musk ox. Or a talking. Talking have short legs supported by large two-toed hooves featuring highly developed spurs, which helps them walk around on rocks and cliffs and stuff. They're characterized by a deep chest, stocky body, and a notably large head with a long arched nose. Both males and females sport uh, horns about 30 centimeters long or 12 inches. Uh, They're capable of growing up to around 25 inches or 64 centimeters. That's definitely not going to be in measure up. The long shaggy coat varies in color, often turning black on the undersides and legs. Um, but there's also like uh, f- the blondish color. Mm-hmm. Uh, four recognized subspecies showcase differences in their coat color, ranging from dark blackish to reddish brown in the eastern Himalayas to lighter yellow gray in the Sichuan province. I've been there. Well, with that being said, let's get into the size. We said it was big. Welcome to the Beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also a part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. Your clarification last time of how to do that worked. Oh, because did it? Because. The way you said, but the way you just said it sounded exactly like someone explaining to me how to buckle my seatbelt on an airplane <laughs> and you're gonna uh, want to have to do this and then if you have to buckle your seatbelt we're gonna be f- flying at an altitude of thirty-five thousand feet and and we're going to reach our destination in two hours and 12 minutes and if you have any questions you can <laughs> at all like my long breath uh we do have a new measure up intro this week nice from our pal and patron, Gray Hughes. Yeah. He says, hey, it's your most junior patron, Gray Hughes. A little birdie, or uh, in parentheses, a Moltres adder, actually. A Moltre- Moltres? Moltres adder. Oh, it must be a binomial name. Well, I'm a th- dork. I didn't see that. <laughs> I thought it was a Pokemon. Moltres is a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Molotrus Atter. I'm typing that in and nothing is coming up. Type in Moltres and, and enjoy pictures of a flaming phoenix bird. Molothrus Atter with a TH is a brown-headed cowbird, which we that, might have done. We did. Did we do the cowbird? No, we did the. We did a butcher bird, which I think is closely related. I think we did but the butcher bird. What was the bird? One of the th- the birds we that we that does uh, nest parasitism or whatever. Oh, like the cuckoo. Is it, yeah, we might have done the cuckoo. The cowbird I'm, is also a nest parasite. Oh, I th- I'm pretty sure the I cowbird think. was related to the butcher bird, and we were talked about how it like impales its like bugs on cactuses and stuff. 
Um, he says, a little birdie told me that you all needed voice recordings for Measure Up. Well, here you go. P.S. I'm practicing writing podcasts, podcast intros, uh, podcast intro raps. So I wrote one for your show. Let me know if you want to see it. Absolutely. Yes. We do. Oh, you got me really excited that this was going to be the podcast intro no. rap. But I would love very much like to to see this or to listen. We to would this. absolutely like to see that. It, does he mean I'm practicing writing podcast intro raps? Okay, so it's just an introduction rap to the podcast. I was thinking like it was a rap with our introduction song. <clears throat> but oh. either I'm, way, I'm definitely, definitely picturing like a Fresh Prince Sugar Hill kind of like <laughs> <laughs> uh, introduction to this. Skilo? Yeah, I'm, um, which which ex- excites me quite a bit. I'm not a big rap fan, but I but there's there is a huge charm to that that I'm I would love to hear. We are definitely down for that. Uh, but without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Measure up. Straight down the middle. A uh, solid and a little uh, sultry. A smooth. Yeah, it was a little. It was a little on the rocks. A little on the rocks. Like is that? I was thinking it was smooth. Oh, you're, Maybe, you're thinking yeah. a high-end neat whiskey. That's what it sounded like. I'm just thinking like one big, one 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 b- big solid ice cube. Oh, <laughs> like a cocktail ice cube, a big chunk. No, you know you get like so, some scotch has just like this one giant ice cube. Yeah, in it. I know it. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, uh, big square. Yeah, big, or sometimes a circle. Big square. I just, you know, it, it's when you want to drink scotch, but you also don't want to feel your upper lip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you want it to be mostly water li- pretty soon. Yeah, you um, want to have to chug it. But you, want to, you want to feel rushed to drink scotch. <laughs> okay, but, maybe, uh, maybe it's a bad analogy. It, uh, it was very smooth. It was very smooth, and you, uh, that only makes me more... Uh, more apt to highly anticipate the introduction rap. That would be great. Yeah, I kind of, I'm already like seeing the musicality in it. Like, da 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 da, measure up. Like, like how he just said it. <laughs> um, I can't get Sugar Hill out of my head for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, Gray Hughes is a guy that lives today. So it's probably not a twenty-year-old <laughs> style. Because <laughs> twenty years, everyone's dead. That was that was life. Yeah, back yeah, then. yeah. He does live today, which means he has not experienced twenty years ago. So, um, um, unfortunate. But he, Gray Hughes, you are our most junior, but not our least important patron. Putting the team on his back this week. Um, you get your like airman wings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk height at the Withers. Withers is the shoulder. I love the Withers. Fixed spine animal, but sometimes I, I, anything that walks on four legs, I'll say it has Withers. Um, I actually don't do goats have fixed spines? They look like they do. Uh. They're 97 to 140 centimeters. Or 38 to 55 inches. So how many Nigerian dwarf goats go into the height of the Takin? Nigerian dwarf goats. Here's it. Nigerian dwarf... Nigerian dwarf goats are among the smallest goat breeds... I looked up what is the smallest, and it said this. And then I looked up the pygmy goat, and it was smaller. So it's among the smallest. They're pretty <laughs> cool, close. Um, both originate from West Africa. 
Yeah, it definitely sounds like you need the horn of a uh, Nigerian pygmy goat to craft uh, the ultimate boss weapon. But <laughs> and there's only like one of them, and it's one of those things where you think you're gonna fight a small goat, but it turns out to be like Nigerian pygmy goat, the world eater. <laughs> It's Nigerian dwarf goat you're looking oh, for. D- dwarf, yeah. Nigerian dwarf goat. <laughs> um, it's like a dwarf star. It's actually quite large. That's, yeah, it's, <laughs> compared to it, other goats. Yeah, a foot. So my answer is 4.5. Final? Yes. The correct answer is 2.3 goats. Oh. The max height of a uh, Nigerian dwarf goat is 60 centimeters. What does that mean? We, that doesn't mean anything to me. What's a it centimeter? It means 2.3 feet times. Let's see it. Let's look it up. I don't care, but it's small. But it's not <laughs> that small. I feel like there's horses that are that, like miniature horses that are that small. 60 centimeters? 23 inches. I mean, that's... I don't think there are horses that are two feet tall at the Withers. That's way too small. Smallest horse. But then again, if you look up the smallest horse, you're going to get an individual. Yeah, Yeah, Pumuckle we've talked about before. Pumuckle? 20 inches tall. At the way there's, yeah, Pumuckle. <laughs> I don't know why it's not ringing any bells. <laughs> We've talked about Pumuckle. There's also Thumbelina. She's uh, 17 inches tall at the way there's. <laughs> Those are some small. These miniature horses. ponies are adorable. And they've probably got so many genetic problems. Yeah, I'm sure neither of them can breathe at all without, like, a a whole machine allowing them to do it. <laughs> Stop looking at it. I'm, I'm getting lost in its eyes. It's so full of <laughs> knowing <laughs> eyes. <laughs> and all who look upon it fall under its spell and are never seen again. <laughs> I'll, I'll love it in despair. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about their weight. Um, they're between 300 and 350 kilograms or 660 to 770 pounds. How many Fiesta size bags of blue heat Takis go into the weight of a Takin? What's a Taki? Great question. Here's a hint. Takis are a rolled tortilla chip that comes in a bright in bright colors with an almost radioactive glow. They are known for bold flavors and a powerful kick of heat. The blue heat flavor is intended to taste like a hot chili pepper, but the baleful Pacific blue Crayola color is reminiscent of something that can only be achieved by the dread chemical manipulation of microplastics. Is that the hint? Look, it's a snack, yeah. Look up Blue Heat Taki. And tell me if you want your child to to consume it. I've never seen this snack before in my life. It's quite a popular snack for those who favor a bold heat. Like, I've never even seen it at a gas station. Or maybe it's one of those things that's just always been there, but I've not it observed it It tastes like gas station. This tastes like a hot gas station. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't look good for you at all. But also, I mean, it could just be food coloring. So, I mean, you could take any chip and just dunk it in food coloring and it will be just it as good for you as it was before. It does have a glow to it, though. It, do- it does have that glow. <laughs> <laughs> so the bag, family size bag, you said? The fiesta size, excuse oh, fiesta me. fiesta size. I mean, what's a family if not a fiesta, right? A f- forever fiesta? Yeah. Let's have people over forever. <laughs> I guess that is a family, right? <laughs> it's, like, it's like it was just me, and now I'm just going to have somebody here forever. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say... F- Six 
six ounces. So my answer is 2,053. We'll just call it two, 2K. NBA Final 2K. Answer. Yes. The correct answer is 615 bags. The Fiesta bag of the of these blue devils these are is dense a chips. pound and four ounces. Either this Fiesta. Or 567 grams. This Fiesta bag is the size of a pillow. Or these are <laughs> some really dense chips. <laughs> They're kind of dense. If they have like the crunch does not yield easily to your teeth. <laughs> oh, have you had these? I've had not the blue heat though. I've had um, the regular ones. The red ones, the ones that are like too red. I've had those. You the, these colors really concern you. It's the heat that concerns me. The it's the flavor. It tastes like hot chemicals. It doesn't mm. taste good. It's just hot, put, but it doesn't taste good along with the heat. Just put just put Mountain Dew in a microwave for 10 seconds and eat, enjoy those hot chemicals instead. <laughs> uh, but that's it. 615 bags of Fiesta go into uh, a Takin. Interesting. I have a, a pound of chips is uh, is quite a bit. Should have gone with my gut. I'm sure the packaging is in is included. It's hard to I'm, find the weight of products without the packaging. Although you don't want to go with your gut when it comes to eating talk talkies or whatever, so because your gut's gonna be bright blue, <laughs> <laughs> and there's gonna be a hole bored into it. Um, <laughs> uh. Would you like to hear some fast facts before we get into the major fact? Yes. Takin are found in the eastern Himalayas. They are the national animal of Bhutan. Uh, they live in small family groups of about 20 individuals. Females and younger males exhibit social behavior, but older males lead more solitary lives. They've had their kids. Uh, during the summer, herds of up to 300 Takin gather on mountain slopes, especially near favorable feeding sites or salt licks or hot springs. Mating season happens between July and August when adult males compete for dominance through head-to-head -head sparring. That's uh, pretty goat-like of them. Yeah, and, and they are want... They are wont to be like goats. Both males and females use their urine scent to indicate dominance. After an approximately eight-month gestation period, they usually give birth to one calf. Or no, you would say kid because they're Capernet. Nope, they're called um, calves. Really? Mm -hmm. they're, they're too cow-like. Slide them over to... The cow, the cow uh, bucket. Bovids. Bovine. <laughs> Bovid 19. Talking <laughs> yeah. uh, migrates to lower forested areas in the winter and prefer sunny spots during sunrise. When disturbed, they make an alarm that sounds like a cough. They are Bovid 19. And the herd <laughs> retreats into bamboo thickets lying on the ground for camouflage. Their predator... Predators include leopards, the Asiatic bear, and sometimes gray wolves, tigers, doles, and snow leopards. Taking, uh, taking, talking, feed <laughs> in the early morning to, in, to late afternoon, consuming various leaves, grasses, bamboo shoots, and flowers. Man, if you live in this part of the world, it's great to have bamboo as part of your things you can eat because yeah. there's lots of it. They also look for salt sources whenever they can. Uh, and when they find a mineral deposit, they'll, they'll stick around for days. Eaten rocks. Um, I mean, I guess grass. That's one of the nice things about... That, that's like the the plus about being... A ruminant? Uh, a, an herbivore. And a ruminant in particular is because like you eat grass. It's, it's, it's everywhere. 
Like, Unless but, you're in Africa and it gets a little too hot for a little too long. True, true. But then you're always looking over your shoulder for, you know, a predator. And the predator's like, I absolutely, there, there's only one place I can get food. And if I don't get it, I'm dying. So it's a little, it's That's a little, true. it's a, it's, it's give and take like life, you know? Uh, they have been observed standing on their hind legs to reach leaves over three meters high. You just you you just won't let up with these uh, with with these European ways of measuring things. Yeah, you know what? Wikipedia often gives me European stuff, and I don't delight in. Well, it's a yard. It's three yeah. yards. The a meter is kind of like one of the easier ones to visualize. <laughs> centimeters, like I just, I don't have centimeters and grams. I don't have a, a conception for liters. I do, thanks to soda. But like, we need to have a conception for centimeters because they're good compared yeah, to inches. That's yeah. I I'll, I'll concede that, but I just don't. I don't. I need it to. Although. Be inches. Europeans measure their own human height in centimeters, which is laughable and disgusting. They don't, Stop they, it. They, one thing I will give the imperial system is it has a foot. It has, it has something between inch and yard. Yeah. Which, uh, like, if it's... That, 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 that makes things a little bit goofy in uh, the metric system. They really do need, like... Oh, I mean, they have a de- a decameter or not a, de- a decimeter, um, which I th- I think needs to come back. You know, I think I think <laughs> we I think we need to make that more of a of like oh I'm I'm six decimeters tall, it means you're sixty cent- centimeters. We no, no, that's not true. Yes, that is true. I mean, we use both technically. If you are a carpenter, you are using centimeters. Or if you're trying to like use a measuring tape for small things, if you're only using the inches on a measuring tape, you're not going to get stuff right. Um, well, no, I mean, I, I'm like, okay, it's just, it gets really confusing. Oh, fractions. It's like, You'd have to oh, fractions. I have to, f- I, I need this to be seven eighths of an inch, please. Yeah. Uh, which is, yeah, it's not ideal, but. Oh, my it's eyes like just com- stuff in cups instead of ounces. They completely Can my I ask eyes you that? gloss over the the centimeters. Why are all recipes in cups and tablespoons and teaspoons, and all packaging is in ounces and grams? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that's all I got. Do you have any big facts? I do. Um, this major fact is called the Taken of Peltham One Two Three. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's so this is kind of like I, I i don't know if you're keeping this in but i like what i said at the outset is this is one of those animals that i saw on a list of cool animals and when i looked at it i was like wow it's this is a really interesting looking animal it's like a vanilla wilde, wildebeest that lives in the himalayas like a, a, a vanilla beast vanilla beast um <laughs> <laughs> a Broomhilda beast. Uh, the, <laughs> but then when when it came time to find a, a like a very specific major fact, like wow, this animal does this one thing um, that most other animals don't do. Um, there's a few things, uh, but it, it wasn't just one big major fact. So we're gonna cover a couple. Uh, major-ish facts. So the first is that they have a very prominent nose. Now, we've already covered the Saiga antelope, which actually does this to the extreme and has a very interesting-looking nose, and that's why we chose it. Um, but the the Takan also kind of does something similar with its nose because it lives in a very cold environment. It lives in the Himalayas, classically cold. Um, and so... It needs to, like, sometimes the air is extremely, is, is so cold that it would be uh, damaging to breathe it in and out. Um, and, in fact, cold air coming in and warm air coming out 
would cause the, the animal to lose a lot of its heat just by breathing. So, what, uh, similar to the Saiga antelope, what the Takin does is it uses its nose to warm up the air that it breathes in before it reaches the ins- its body uh, or its lungs. Um, some biologists have looked at the Takin and thought it looked like a bee stung moose. It's funny because they're always comparing this to some other animal. Like, hey, look, it looks like a wildebeest. It's a moose. It's a cow. It's a gazelle. It's a goat. It's a muskox. It's its, its own thing. Okay. <laughs> um, it also doesn't look like a moose at all. So I don't know where that's coming from. Of all of those animals, I'd say it looks like a moose possibly the least. Um, but whatever. I'm not a biologist. Um but so it has this complex network of sinus cavities with um, capillaries that are very close to the, uh, the the surface of the skin, so that when cold air enters in through the nose, it is warmed in this this network of, of cavities before it reaches and goes goes into the uh, the lungs, so that there's warm air going in and warm air going out, meaning that the uh, the uh, the talking does not lose a lot of heat whenever it's breathing. Um, so it's got a big nose, but it's for a reason. Um, they also have uh, special oil glands that secrete this um, well oil. It's it's bitter tasting. Apparently, it's has a burning taste i don't know like a talkie <laughs> yeah maybe maybe, it's, it's, maybe it tastes like blue like a talkie <laughs> blue gas um, station <laughs> it tastes like a blue gas a blue a hot blue gas station um i don't know who decided to lick one of these things to figure out like exactly how burning of a taste um <laughs> like you just you pet one of these like you know Himalayan wildebeest, and you're like, "Oh, it's oily." And then you just you just do a Jack Sparrow like slow lick of your hand, um, and then and now you have data. Now you have data. Uh, but the reason for this oil is that it, it covers their fur, uh, it both keeps them warm, and it's water off a Taki's t- Takin's back. It just it, it make it makes their their fur uh, hydrophobic beads up and rolls off Uh, which if you've ever been in a cold environment staying not wet is super important so um uh and especially in a mountain environment it can tend to rain quite often so uh being waterproof is pretty nice so they have an oily coat makes them waterproof um, and the last thing I have is that they were possibly the inspiration for the myth of the golden fleece, um, which is the skin or the pelt of a golden ram creature. Um, it, in the myth, it flies. Um, it saved a Greek god that sacrificed it, took its pelt, um, and gave it to a king which was stolen by Jason and the Argonauts, which is my favorite bluegrass band. (laughs) Um, And it is uh, considered a symbol of authority and royalty. And Kratos, the god of war, uses it it as a shield to block all incoming damage unless the attack is glowing red. (laughs) Um, but yeah, then maybe they saw uh, one of the one of the blonde uh, variants of the of the talking and said like, "Hey, uh, I bet you um, a, a Greek god skinned that and gave it to a king." Mm-hmm. Which is, I mean, that's how these myths start, right? Um, and I that mean, you gotta skin it, especially if it's cool. If it's cool, you gotta skin it. <laughs> that's the book I was reading 
John Henry Patterson. Basically, <laughs> that's, that. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Let me kill it. Skin it. Keep it. Ghost head. in the darkness. The ghost and the darkness. I keep seeing the ghost Ooh, in the darkness. What is that? Ghost. Shoot it. Well, you can't observe something if it keeps running away from you or killing all your men. Kill it first. Nineteenth century British nationalism or British. Um, Naturalism. Naturalism. Is, ooh, yes. look at that. Shoot it and keep it. But you can only shoot it as long as you use like one of those blunderbuss like trumpet looking guns. <laughs> yeah. So you have like a one in ten chance of actually hitting it even if your aim is on point. Um, and it just adds to the challenge. Um, as if living in the 19th century wasn't enough of a challenge. All right, and that's all I've got. That's the that's the talking, the talking. It uh, it has a big swollen nose to heat up air uh, that it breathes. It has uh, stinky oil that it covers its coat with, um, and the Greeks uh, think it means uh, or thought it meant uh, it was a symbol of authority. And possibly a <laughs> shield against evil. Good. Do you got anything else? That's all I got. All right, that's the talking. Uh, for you out there in Podcastia, get that good, warm nose air. Cover your coat with waterproof stank and tame the Greek gods themselves, like the talking here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> talking talking that's what we've been doing